everybody and welcome to 7 New Ideas for Your Team Business. I'm Courtney Kibitza with Stalls TV and today we're going to be talking ways to think outside of what you currently do for your team business. And so when we think about um, team business in any business in general really, we often kind of pigeonhole ourselves or we think about, uh, we keep the blinders on and we want to think about what we do for the business and fall is one of those seasons where a lot of team dealers will work on team uniforms and they kind of keep those blinders on and that's all we're going to be printing is the team uniform. And we don't really think outside of what we can be selling to that customer base. And no matter what market you're selling to, there's a lot of benefit in selling each customer multiple items and being able to sell more to one customer. It's the easiest way to expand your revenue and it's the most profitable way to grow your business rather than searching for new customers and spending all that time. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to take off those blinders and we're going to take the time to think about seven new ideas that you can grow your team business with or to sell to those current team customers. So if you're currently decorating for the team sports market, this will give you seven new ideas to go after those schools with. And if you're not currently selling to the school market or the team business market, um, but you want to dive into this, then it's also going to give you seven new ways to dive into that market. Because one of the things about the team business is even if you're not currently decorating for those uniforms, there's so many sales opportunities out there that you may be able to snatch up a couple of those and then get your foot in the door for additional bids if you want to do the uniform printing later. So we're going to share some tips for that today. If you're joining me on Facebook Live, you can go ahead and chat in any questions through the comment section. I'd be happy to answer those live. I see a lot of you here. Um, so hello to all of you guys joining us. We're excited to, to have you. And then if you're joining us on the GoToWebinar client, you can also chat in your questions there and Jimmy will feed them to me throughout the broadcast and we'll stop throughout to answer some of those questions from both sides. Um, so we'll go ahead and dive in and get started. But the first one today, I'm going to head over to the Fusion Heat Press. You guys got a little uh, shot of that here earlier today, but the Fusion specifically um, is really good for printing multiple items. So I'm going to be using the 16 by 20 Fusion and a 6 by 10 Platin to print our first opportunity, and that is going to be outerwear. And so outerwear are one of those things that a lot of decorators kind of cringe and you um, kind of tense up when you think about printing it because outerwear is one, uh, more expensive of a blank, so it's harder to justify if you can't print it successfully. But it's also much more profitable, so it's a very high margin item. So being able to print them successfully leads you into an opportunity that's very high margin and very high in profit, so it can really help to grow your bottom line. And so we're going to talk about how to successfully print outerwear. And so when it comes to looking at outerwear, there's a range of products available in the outerwear market. This is a simple quarter zip jacket. It's a performance fleece. We're going to talk about printing this here shortly. There's also um, soft shell jackets. There are um, straight up zip, ja zip up jackets, hooded sweatshirts, rain jackets. There's so many opportunities. So when you start to look at printing outerwear, it's incredibly um, profitable for many opportunities. The opportunities include things like fan apparel. They include coaches jackets. They include warm up jackets for the teams. Um, they include um, jackets and outerwear for anybody who's on the sidelines. So it may be a personal trainer or somebody like that who's helping out with a team. All of those are opportunities for you to outfit them for the season and just for fan apparel. And like I said, it's a highly profitable niche. So we'll talk first about how to print outerwear successfully and I'll load some on the Fusion to talk through that with you. The first thing you're going to want to do is consider the fabric that you're printing. To print this quarter zip jacket, I'm going to be doing a left chest logo here, um, but you'll notice when I check the tag, I'm actually printing 100% polyester jacket. And so a lot of the outerwear we're seeing today, a lot of the high margin outerwear that we're seeing today is going to be a polyester base or a performance material type. And so we're seeing a lot of these moisture wicking, athleisure fabrics entering into this market. And so when you print outerwear, you want to make sure that the heat transfer that you're using is compatible with the item that you're printing. If you're going to something that's a bit heat sensitive, like 100% polyester um, or moisture wicking polyester like this jacket is, you want to make sure to test before you start printing. I always recommend getting one in and testing it if you're going to be offering this. Um, and then recommend and offer one style of jacket or a multiple styles of jacket that you know work successfully. For all of our Stalls TV classes, that's one thing that we continually do when we choose outerwear, when we choose blanks, we do test them to make sure they're going to work successfully before recommending them to you. Um, and this jacket is just from Sanmar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Hotronics Fusion that I've loaded that 6x10 platen into 
and I'm going to just thread on my jacket. You'll notice this makes it easy for printing left chest logos on multiple items. So once I have that loaded on there, get all my bulk out from underneath, I can fill a little bit of the jacket in there. I'm getting a nice flat print surface, so zipper, seams, all of that is off of my print location. If you don't have the option for printing interchangeable platens like this, you can easily load in a heat printing pillow and get these same benefits for isolating your print location. Now that I have that loaded on here, the transfer I'm going to be using has actually been cut on a vinyl cutter. I mentioned that you want to make sure that the transfer that you're using applies to the fabric successfully and that is best for this fabric. So this is actually premium plus. It was cut on a vinyl cutter, but anything that is a low temperature solution is going to be great for these heat sensitive fabrics. So I'm going to go ahead and align this down on my shirt going about three to four inches over from the center seam as well as about five inches down from my top of my shirt. The nice thing about the 6 by 10 platen, as long as you have the shirt loaded on straight, it makes it easy to isolate that print area and align the graphic successfully. Now Premium Plus can apply at 280 degrees for eight to 10 seconds. So again, it's that low temperature and that low dwell time that allows me to print this successfully. And while you can't see the top of my screen, I am actually using a light pressure with this 6x10 platen. Normally with Premium Plus you would want to be at a medium pressure, but I actually dialed it back a little bit because I'm going to such a small platen space. One thing I often see decorators do when they move to a small platen or a small pillow is they um, have the same pressure or a higher pressure, which actually can leave an indention mark. So when you're putting this much mass of a 16x20, down on this small plat and you want to make sure to dial back that pressure a little bit and lighten it because you're actually putting more pressure on it because it's a large amount of mass going on a very small platen. Premium Plus is a warm peel so it's cooled down a little bit while I've been talking so I'm going to peel that back. And we've got a completed application so this would make a really nice high margin jacket for a coach and one thing to consider when you're looking at this opportunity with this outerwear is that it's great for pairing for our coach's jacket, great for putting um, maybe something underneath it that doesn't say coach like football or Panthers or something for the school and selling it as fan apparel. These heathered garments from Sanmar are really popular as well. They're following a lot of the trends that we're seeing right now in retail from large sportswear brands like Nike and Under Armour and so it's a great way to get a profitable, profitable piece there. So I'll set this aside here. I see a couple of questions coming in on Facebook, so I'm going to take a few of those. Um, Marlene had asked, are the older Hotronics the kind that have the bolts not as easy to change, or can you change out those lower platens? Marlene, yes, you can change out those interchangeable platens, but you won't have the quick change latch. Um, any heat press that I believe was manufactured after 2014 um, for the clam style presses would have two bolts underneath. They do have the platens available, but you would have to use the um, use your tools to kind of get those off there and swap them out. Um, Nicola asked, my designs seem to come out crooked sometimes, how can I avoid this? Anything you can do for alignment is really beneficial. Um, so one thing is uh, purchasing a laser alignment system will be great. Loading your shirt on straight, so making sure you load the shirt on um, taut with the bottom platen and making sure it's straight across the top is another great way to making sure things are um, what, another great way to make sure things are aligned properly is loading that shirt on straight using rulers, using some tools like that. We've got a few classes on stallstv.com that really dive into alignment, so I'd encourage you to check some of those out there for tips um, into that. Um, Steven, you asked if we can actually make a conversion chart that lists the original size platen with a medium presser and five to six. What would it be on an eight by ten? That's an incredibly great um, recommendation. Uh, Suggestion, we'll go ahead and take that recommendation and we'll work on getting that created for you so that you're able to do that. Um, Jimmy, if I had any questions coming in on GoToWebinar as well today? Uh, yes, Kendrick asked, uh, when pricing outerwear, do you stick with the concept to double the price of the garment or do you ask for cost plus half? Yeah, so that's a great question. So when you're pricing um, Team, when you're pricing outerwear, you want to make sure that you're making the margin that you should be making. So you at least want to double it. Um, a lot of people 
their strategies for pricing will vary. So one thing that I recommend is um, looking at what the market will allow you to charge. So sometimes that tends to be more than what just double the cost is. Of course, you want to try to make as much profit as possible. So if I have a jacket that's, say, um, 20 or $25 for my blank garment, I'm adding $5 in decoration and labor and overhead, I'm going to want to sell that for at least a $60 charge. But you may find that the market price may allow for $75. So I recommend looking at the market price um, as well and not cheating yourself out of some pricing. And so we've done some um, videos as well on sales to be about pricing strategy that really dive into that more. But really looking at what the market is um, willing to pay for something so that you're not taking too less of a pricing for your personalized goods. It looks like I got all the questions so far, so I'm going to dive into a couple other opportunities. Uh, one other thing to look at is I want to print one more outerwear jacket. Again, I'm going to use Premium Plus. This would be just another opportunity if you have that school's logo, you're going to print their coach's jacket. This one is actually just a zip-up hooded sweatshirt um, that's actually from OGO and from Sanmar as well. So this jacket is another really high-end garment. I recommend something like this if you're printing for maybe those personal trainers or maybe just for the teams for something that's a little bit more fashionable. It's incredibly soft. This is actually a cotton polyester, polyester spandex blend. Um, so it follows a lot of that tri-blend soft garments that is really popular, has some unique pockets and striping throughout it as well. And again, I'm just going to load that on and I decided to use Premium Plus because anytime I look at something that has a lot of these tri-blend heat sensitive fabrics like spandex, polyester, rayon, anything like that, then I again would continue to um, go to something that's a little bit low over a temp lower of a temperature for me to print that successfully. Swap my timer back to 10 seconds, and again, that light pressure. All right, so we'll give this black color a few times to cool down. So again, I'm using that same logo from the customer, and this time I just personalized it with soccer. Another cool way to do this would be to screen print all of the main logos and then offer your personalization in a CAD cut product like this. It could be somebody's name, it could be the coach, it could be um, the sport that they're playing for, but that's a really great way to offer personalization but still gain some efficiency in printing by having the, the main part printed as well in either a screen print transfer or a direct screen print. So this again is just another style of jacket, another option. So this would be a cotton, kind of more of a um, easier to print base softer kind of garment and then we had the performance jacket as well. You could easily expand to more soft shell jackets um, and more styles like this as well if you're looking at cold weather areas where maybe the people on the sidelines would need those for um, the team. So don't short yourself in thinking outside of the box to fans and um, team members in that way as well. So outerwear is one of the first ways that we're going to look at expanding your team business. The second thing I want to look at keeps in the warm-up and apparel realm, but it really talks a little bit more about styling and some different styles that you can do with your spirit wear. And so I want to look at switching out my platen for this next application. I want to create a warm-up that is not just a cotton t-shirt, um, or maybe this may be a fan wear shirt, just something that's just not um, ordinary, one something that's a little bit more extraordinary. And so I want to show you a print that we've actually featured in the July Project Press It subscription box. This box basically is for being able to increase your sales through different markets and we provide you with samples and transfers to create looks like the one that you're going to see here. Before I loaded my shirt on, you notice I just checked my pressure since I swapped out the platen and made sure I have a medium pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and load this shirt on this shirt, very similar to that heathered shirt that we had in the beginning. Again, has that really kind of edgy, textured look. This is really popular for just creating some different dimension and textures in the fabric. Same trend we see across sportswear brands. So the fact that we can get this in the wholesale market is a huge opportunity to profit with custom sports apparel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a two-color design. And I'm going to be using a product called Super Tech Clear. And I'm going to just make it a unique placement. So rather than placing the design directly um, down the center of the shirt, I'm going to make it a little bit more justified to the other side. Load this onto this 11 by 15. Again, I'm going to make sure it's completely straight. So I'm going to pull that shirt taut, pull it slowly back. So that's some alignment tips there that we had asked, um, you had asked a little bit earlier about just making sure you're loading it straight because that's always the first step in making sure alignment is perfect. 
Now that I have this product here, what it's going to do is the clear part you're seeing where that Spartan head is, is actually going to create a cool matte finish. So this product is called Super Tech Clear Matte. I'm going to go ahead and press this down for 10 seconds and then I'll add some personalization to it as well. And so this gives you an opportunity to create some really cool, modern, edgy looking finishes on the apparel. So it's something that's a little bit different from what we see in the day to day um, school colors on a garment. And I really like using colors like charcoal, black, um, even athletic gray or white as a base. Ordering these in blanks and the, or in um, bulk and then if you sell to multiple schools, then the personalization can be in the school colors because that's the great that's the way to really gain some efficiency in the costing of your um, garments and stocking them rather than having to inventory the same shirt in multiple finishes. So to, Super Tech Clear Matte was a cool peel. You can kind of see how it's giving you kind of an understated look there on the shirt. You'll see it a little bit more when we move it around. So I got that mascot head there, and I'm going to add some personalization or a name drop in the school colors and this would be another great example of a way to do this with your design. I'm going to go ahead and slide this down just a little bit. And then I'm going to press Premium Plus for another 10 seconds. Now remember Premium Plus is that lower temperature solution. So Premium Plus as well as Super Tech Clear Matte are perfect for performance wear because they allow for that low temperature application. It's a warm peel so I'll give it a few shakes, a couple of seconds to cool down there. And then I can start to peel it back. If for some reason you have a warm peel material you start peeling it a little bit too early. You can always cover it, reseal it down, and repress it. This one was just fine, but just a good tip to have there. So I'll pull this off so you guys can kind of see how that clear matte material stood out a little bit on the garment. So you can kind of see as I shift it and change the colorways, you're starting to see some of that Spartan head show up. And you can really see it um, in person here. So shortly in the broadcast, we're going to be doing a giveaway where you're going to actually get the Project Press It box that goes along with this shirt. So you'll get an opportunity to make this sample, as well as the complete sales guide to start selling to schools for some of these different sportswear um, and team warm-up looks. And so um, we'll be giving away one of those on Facebook, and we'll be giving away one of those in GoToWebinar. So for GoToWebinar, if you're here, you're entered to win. On Facebook, I can see some of you guys already starting to like the broadcast. You're loving the broadcast. Um, so go ahead and like us there on Facebook, or love us, or react to us in any way. And that will enter you to win um, the Project Press It box. So like I said, we're going to be giving away one of those to both GoToWebinar and here on Facebook here in a few minutes. So I'll give you guys plenty of time to um, enter to win there with your likes and your comments. So um, warm-ups, fan gear. Fan gear is a huge opportunity. That's just one small look that you have for fan gear whenever you're creating designs for um, your different schools in different markets. There's a ton of opportunity with glitter and uh, foils. We recently published the 2017 Fall Spirit Wear Guide. So take a look at that. Take a look at the live class Jenna did. It's a huge niche for you to dive into and a big profit opportunity if you're already selling to teams or if you want to start selling to teams and you want to just dive into that business. So that's a couple of things to look at. So while you guys are liking, you're still reacting to the broadcast, I want to head over to another opportunity, which is actually a sports ball press. So we get a lot of questions on this at live events and at trade shows um, because it's a really cool opportunity and it presents a lot of opportunities to sell as well. So this press is specifically designed for printing on any um, inflatable sports ball like a soccer ball, a football, a basketball, anything that's large and inflatable like that um, and made of a um, synthetic leather product. And so these ones from Champro are really great for personalizing. A lot of opportunity for this because you can print these for promotional giveaways, maybe put a sponsor logo on it. You can print these as a gift, put a name on it for one of the um, players. You can even offer these as trophies in place of the current trophy as a personalized ball. So it's a little bit more of a higher end trophy than maybe just the standard what you see every day. So some great opportunities and printing them are incredibly easy as well. So. What I'm going to do is you'll notice the cradle on the bottom of this heat press is completely adjustable. So that way I can adjust it for the ball that I'm going to be printing. This one I'm going to be printing is a basketball, so I'm just going to load it directly in here. 
once I have that in place, I want to lock and make sure I get the proper pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down on this handle until I get about two fingers width between the magnetic knob and the handle top. And then on the right hand side of my press, there's a latch. So I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit. And that's going to lock it into place so I know I'm going to get this right accurate pressure that I want on my basketball. Once I have that locked into place, I can begin to align my transfer. Now this one I'm going to be applying is um, Supertech Opaque. There's two transfer options you can choose for personalizing sports balls. One is going to be Supertech Opaque. The next one is going to be um, Sport Film Light, so this is great for full color. I'm going to be choosing to use a full color logo that's maybe a promotional logo for a um, sponsor that's maybe promoting um, their event or a part promotional, pro promotional sponsorship they have at the actual game by using their logo on there. But if you're just doing single color personalization, Cat Cut Sport Foam Light's a great option. Both of these materials are going to apply at the low temperature of 230 degrees for eight seconds. So I'm just gonna line my transfer up there, lock my press down for eight seconds. And then I'm going to let this cool down a few minutes before I peel back the carrier. And then one thing you'll notice about textured balls, so things like basketballs, footballs, is that once you peel back this carrier, you can actually get a real authentic textured look by just covering up. Um, and I could cut this cover sheet down if I wanted to to make it fit a little bit better on that sports ball, but I'm going to use the big one. And I'll press it for another five to eight seconds. And it's just going to drive that thin material down and give that textured appearance on the sports ball. So it's going to be pretty neat. Set that aside there. And then by doing that, I've got a really great texture. It's kind of taken on the texture of that sports ball, but a perfect opportunity for adding personalization for, like I said, a promotional sponsor, a gift, any opportunity like that. So any inflatable sports ball, your basketballs, your sports um, your footballs, your volleyballs, soccer balls, all of them, just another sales opportunity to kind of think and go outside of the box there with that. So we'll load that into place. We have a full video on Stalls TV that shows you how to load multiple styles of balls um, and as well as on stalls.com so you'll get to see how to personalize more styles if you're interested in that. So, so far we've talked about outerwear, we've talked about warm-ups, we've talked about sports balls. The next thing I want to move to is headwear. This is another great opportunity to think outside the box for fans and for players depending on the season of when the sports teams um, we're going to be decorating for, especially for spring sports. We look a lot at teams wearing headwear there. So we'll look at two headwear options. The first, when you think of headwear, naturally is going to be a hat. And so we're going to look at a way to personalize and print a different style of, or a flat bill style of a hat. Uh, before I do that, I am going to just turn my heat press up real quick for a couple other applications. If you remember earlier, I was at that 280 application. I'm going to want to be up somewhere around 330 or 340 degrees for some more applications here shortly. All right, so we have this flat bill hat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Hotronics cap press for printing these applications. Now this auto clam press actually has an auto release to it so it'll automatically open. Also has interchangeable platen. So when you purchase this type of heat press, you'll notice it comes with a blue platen. This is the one that actually comes with the cap press. But it has interchangeable styles that work really well for different types of hats. The hat that I'm going to be printing here is actually a structured six panel cap. And so while the transfer will apply directly over the seam, I want to make sure I'm getting a flat, even surface. And so what happens a lot of the times when decorators get started printing hats or headwear is they either don't think about using interchangeable platens or they don't invest in them. But you'll notice that when I don't have an interchangeable platen and I load on my cap and lock it into place, I've got a lot of buckling that's happening here in the front of my platen. And I want to be able to eliminate that. And so I'm going to load in this smaller plat, and this is actually the all-star plat, and I believe it's about two and a quarter by six inches. And so this one is going to allow me to lock this cap in place, and now I'm not getting that buckling, so I know I'm getting a flat, even surface. That's going to be crucial for printing my application. I'm going to go ahead and load on my logo here on the top of the hat, lock it down and make sure everything's going to hit the heat press plat in. Make sure I have the shirt loaded on flat, or the uh, hat loaded on flat. I'm going to lock this in place for the recommended application. 
It's going to be 15 seconds. Then we're actually going to personalize the bottom of the hat as well. All right, so we have that done there. I can go ahead and peel back my carrier. And then using the hat press, we were able to personalize the top part of the hat. And so that's really easy for adding personalization to the front of caps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back over to that fusion heat press. And I'm going to take a interchangeable platen that I just grabbed here. And it works for printing the underside bill of hats because when we start to move the headwear, of course anybody can print a hat, but you want to be able to add more print locations. So being able to print the front of the hat, the side of the hat, or even the bill can add more uniqueness to it, make it drive up the profit you can make on it, and just make it all over a um, stunning look and something that's really going to be eye-catching for your customers. And so I'm going to drop in that platen using that same quick change system there. And this actually will allow you to print up to four different hats. And so there's actually multiple styles of these um, platens available today. I can just load in my um, flat bill hat there. I'm going to grab my complementing design. So I printed the front with just the school initials with the NC. And now I'm going to put this Panthers mascot logo underneath here. And if you're curious and you're thinking, I plan on printing um, these hats, how do I get this pattern for making sure it'll fit inside of these fat bill, flat bill hats? This one's from AutoCap, it's the snapback, but this will also work for any 5150. At CADWorksLive.com, we have the template built in there. It's called 5150 on there, where you can actually um, get the template so it's definitely going to fit inside the hat and you can customize that full bill there. All right, so I'm going to press this for 15 seconds. The product I used on the hat is CAD Cut Fashion Film, so we had a 15 second application at the cat press at 320 degrees, and we have the same application here at the Fusion. Peel away my cover sheet there. Peel back that carrier. And we have the completed personalization. So we really rounded out this headwear with the um, flat bill hat personalization on the bottom and the hat on the top. So that's a great option when you're selling to the male market for headwear and it really creates a great look. Like I mentioned, think about going outside the box, adding personalization here on the side, maybe on the top of the bill, which you can also personalize with this platen by flipping it on the inside, but some great opportunities there. Now for the females and the ladies, I want to talk a little bit about some more opportunities with printing bows. So we have a lot of opportunities for printing and personalizing custom bows. This is a great market for your selling to cheerleaders, dancers, um, any female fan wear. I even see a big opportunity for pairing together something like a t-shirt that's been decorated with a hair bow so that you're able to create an entire package set and adding a little bit more profit to what you're selling. So a t-shirt or a sweatshirt with a matching hair bow with a pair of um, sweatpants, it's a great way to outfit the look and sell it for a little bit more. So this one was actually created with um, CAD Cut Glitter Flake where we actually took the glitter flake and printed it onto a grow grain ribbon and created that full color glitter effect. So really easy to do with CAD Cut Glitter Flake. Again, we have a ton of videos on StallsTV.com that walk you through the printing as well as the tying of the hair bows if you're looking to get started here. Another opportunity would be to purchase hair bows that are pre-made and just add some personalization. So these would be two, two schools, AG and UHS, that we've printed hair bows for just adding that small personalization. And for the material cost here, you're literally looking at about 10 cents in material cost. You can use your scraps that you have from other jobs, gang it together with maybe the t-shirt job, just cut that little logo out, and then quickly print these extra items. This one here, we just added a monogram. So monogramming is still incredibly popular for um, any kind of application where you're adding personalization. So a great way to tap in on that with the female market. And then this one, again, we have some videos on it, but it's a fully sublimated using CAD Cut Glitter Flake. We actually printed the full sublimated pattern and mascot and made a fully custom glitter hair bow out of this as well. So you don't want to shortchange yourself in the opportunities that you have available for your customers. You want to be able to consider the 
full complete outfit from head to toe. So we're looking at headwear, we're looking at hair bows, we're looking at t-shirts um, to pair with them, we're looking at outfits to pair with them. We wanna completely make sure that we are selling as many things as possible to our customer base. All right, so headwear, hats, and all that good stuff. I'm gonna set this off to the side and we can take a look at a few other opportunities here for selling custom apparel. All right, so before I do that, earlier today in the broadcast, I mentioned we were gonna be doing a giveaway. Um, so if you like the broadcast here on Facebook, you're gonna be included in that giveaway. Let me go ahead and refresh this page. So I see a couple more of you guys liking it here to enter into that broadcast. We'll pick from GoToWebinar first. Uh, I randomly picked the number nine, and uh, Laura Pellman is the winner. So Laura Pellman is the winner from, um, it looks like the GoToWebinar. Looks like Christina Calamano is the winner here on Facebook for the um, box. So we will be contacting you two um, to get you guys um, your address and your information. We'll send out those Project Press It boxes to you. We appreciate you joining us there. Make sure I just didn't have any other questions that had came in on the broadcast as I'm seeing some of these show up here. All right. Um, Teresa asked, are the presses easy to switch out the platens? They are if they have this quick change latch. You'll notice, Teresa, that it has just a little latch on the side of the platen here that allows me to open that and then just lift the platen easily out. So um, they are incredibly easy to swap out as long as you have this. If not, they tend to usually have two not um, bolts underneath that you would have to use a tool to be able to do that. Um, Rhonda said, I missed a little bit of the video, just wondering if I can use Premium Plus white on a black polyester jacket without bleeding through? Great question, Rhonda. So um, if you're wondering about CatGut Premium Plus, it's a very thin material. One thing we often see on dark polyesters is that sometimes you can have what's called dye migration, where the dyes from a dark polyester will bleed through a light color number or any number, you just see it more on light. And it causes a, um, the black polyester to turn the white material looking like a gray or it may turn a red uh, on a red jersey, it may turn a white number pink. Um, it doesn't always happen on polyester, so I would encourage you, Rhonda, to test your garment to see if it does have the option for sublimating, maybe ordering an extra one in to test. Another trick I use a lot on high bleed polyester, like a polyester denier, is I'll take one of these craft paper sheets, press it over top, and I'll see if any of the dyes will come out. From any kind of um, denier polyester, you'll often see, like with a team jersey, that you'll even see some of the inks coming off on there, so you'll know that you should safeguard it. Um, Premium Plus will not keep it from bleeding through. That low temperature will help a little bit, but you're going to want a product for like thermofilm for a polyester garment. And you can apply that on moisture wicking polyesters for as low as 300 degrees to get a little bit lower temperature there. All right, looks like I've got all the questions. Um, congratulations to my winners for the giveaway. We're gonna continue along with the um, ways to grow your team sales. So the next two ways we're gonna look at are gonna be focusing on the tailgating aspect of the team sports business. So you don't really think too much about um, that aspect as far as people going to be enjoying the game prior to the sporting event. You're always thinking about dressing fans or um, selling to sponsors in that way. And so one opportunity that got a lot of feedback on our Facebook page um, and in our Facebook group, Heat Press for Profit, is the ability to offer tailgate tents. And so I want to show you a quick clip of what we've done here to be able to print a 10 by 10 pop-up tent. And so what we've done is we cut a graphic that is actually 44 inches wide and we laid it out over top of a tent. Um, and so we used a heat seal tape to hold the transfer down in place and then we heat applied everything there. So we'll go ahead and show you guys the video now on how we heat applied that. And so again, we're just pressing, once we've taped everything down in place, we're literally just using this exact same 16 by 20 fusion heat press, pressing, sliding, and pressing again until we get that full 44 inch wide graphic. It's incredibly easy to do as long as you have the right tools and you wanna take the time to line everything up. And it's just a big opportunity for printing these type of tailgating tents for sponsors or for events or for um, the school to even have at the, um, at the sporting event themselves, maybe outside of the fields. So again, you're seeing us just sliding and pressing, um, myself as well as Jimmy, who's one of the Stalls TV educators here and joining me here in the live class. And so we've got a really great shot there of the tailgate tent. So there's a lot of opportunity in printing 
something like this. So let's talk a little bit about the opportunity as well as how to do it successfully. First, the opportunity really expands to businesses that may be wanting to promote their um, brand at the sporting event, so it's a great opportunity there. Also for the schools, and really if you think about expanding into some of these larger graphics like that, there's a lot of opportunity outside of the sports business for it. But it's a great and a cool way to do that. Now the tents we just purchased from large stores like Amazon, um, Walmart, any sporting goods store is where we purchased our tents from. Um, I don't know of any wholesale sellers, but you want to look for a tent that tends to have a polyester based material. 99% of them are going to be a polyester type product. Um, and so for the printing application for that, we chose to use Supertech Sublistop. You could also use CAD-cut thermofilm for another option. Um, both of those will work really great because they'll help to safeguard against that dye migration that I mentioned a little bit earlier on 100% polyester items. And so both of those work. We just tape it down in place, press and slide until you get all of the personalization completed there. So tailgate tents is another big opportunity. Another opportunity for tailgating is simply just the bags that are carried um, in and out of the in and out of the tailgated event. So I'll slide over some of my paperwork there. So this is just a simple standard tote bag. We see um, a lot of opportunity for personalizing these and calling them tote, calling them tailgate totes. Um, this one is actually from Sanmar, so it's one of their standard tote bags. Um, so it has a lot of room for carrying items. It's also great for if you're selling to schools for just personalizing for the students to carry their items in and out of classes with. Um, but this bag specifically is from Sanmar. Wholesale Boutique and Viv and Lou also sell a few styles of the tailgate totes that are really popular. Now to print a tote bag like this, again I'm swapping out that interchangeable platen, dropping in an 11 by 15 that I have available. Once I have that in place, I'm just going to open this up and thread it onto the platen. And so you'll notice that we have a zipper on the inside of this pocket. So I'm going to want to avoid the zipper as well as the grommets as well as these thick seams from the handle. And so to do this, I'm going to be loading it onto my platen here. And then that way everything's going to fall off the back side there and I've got a nice flat even print surface to start with. So that's the big benefit of having this threadable heat press where I was able to split it open there and get rid of the side that had the zipper. Like I said, if you don't have access to this, then you'd want to purchase something like a heat printing pillow or a print perfect pad to isolate that print location. Main difference is a print perfect pad will work for firm transfers. If you're doing anything that needs a light or medium pressure, then a pillow will work perfect. Now to do this, I'm not going to preheat simply because you don't always have to preheat. Um, items are not, are not going to be laundered, so that falls into headwear or bags, things like that. I'm using CAD Cut um, Glitter Flake. This is an incredibly popular product here. Um, great way to add some bling. It's just to simply cut on a vinyl cutter. Applies at 300 degrees for 10 seconds. I'm at a little bit higher application because I'm getting ready for some more prints. So I'm actually at 340, but you would definitely want to be down at 300 degrees for this application. Um, simply because you'd be at a lower temperature for the black cotton fabric. Peel back that carrier there. Fast, easy, very profitable. Again, another opportunity to think about the fan wear um, and the people that are going to tailgates being able to print something like this. We chose to go with um, a monogram that's a little bit um, seasonal, a little bit special for the sport. So we chose a football bow, added that personalization. The monogram personalization could be multiple things. Here we chose somebody's personal initials. You could choose um, AGHS or CHS for the school. You could choose to um, add personalization maybe that has a name underneath here of the school. So maybe it'll have CHS and Panthers or something for the mascot. A lot of opportunities in the design that you're actually putting on these bags. And you can make them as personal as you want, um, but the idea really is selling them and creating a package with them. So not leaving money on the table. If you're already selling fanware, this should absolutely be a part of it for your team sports because it's just an additional item that they can purchase when they're purchasing their shirts and their sweatpants from you. So super fast, super easy, super profitable. All right. So speaking of spirit wear and those types of opportunities and being able to sell apparel outside of the box, I want to look at two different opportunities. So a few weeks back, if you've joined us here on Facebook Live, 
you um, or through GoToWebinar, you may have seen a class we had done on school fundraising. Um, if you didn't get to join us for that class, it's always available as all of our recorded classes are here on the Stalls TV, uh, on StallsTV.com or also here on the Stalls Facebook page under the video section. Most importantly, fundraising is very profitable. Um, if it's done correctly and executed correctly as we demonstrate in that class, it presents a huge opportunity for you to sell more spirit wear. And so what we talked a lot about in that class is being able to set them up successfully. And so when you think about setting up school fundraisers, you may be selling multiple items and you may choose to do maybe a pair of sweatpants like we've talked a little bit about with outfitting. And you may also choose to pair together a sweatshirt or a t-shirt or multiple items together. When you do this and you select the items for your customers to sell, you're essentially setting up your school um, students and the team members to start selling the school the apparel for you and then you're um, going to give them back a commission or a percentage of the sale. So you would set it up in a way that if you sell X amount of dollars, I'm going to give you X amount back. And so you're encouraging them to hit different plateaus and different levels and sell more products for you. And so fundraising is a really great way to boost your spirit wear sales by setting up those programs. So I encourage you to really watch that full broadcast so you can really learn a little bit more about it. But I'm going to give you a sneak of it here as we print some options that would be great for fanware solutions. So first we're going to go ahead and print this sweatshirt. This is just a shirt from um, Bella Canvas. So it's an incredibly soft garment dipped um, item. So it's really um, going to be kind of a high-end product that we're going to be looking at. Now for my transfer, I'm going to go ahead and swap my platen and rotate it a little bit. Now screen printing is still incredibly widely used for multiple applications. It's still one of the most popular. What I've done here is I've chose to go with a screen printer transfer for multiple reasons. You'll notice while this looks like a lot going on in the sheet, of course I'm not going to press this down completely on my sweatshirt. With screen printed transfers, I can really gain some efficiency in how I order my transfers and the items I can print with it. So this has five different logos on this sheet. So what I can do is I can cut apart the transfer that I want and I can really get creative with what I do with it. So this is going to be my print that goes on the front of this shirt. I'm going to press this for 8 to 10 seconds at 340 degrees. This transfer paper from Transfer Express is actually called Goof Proof. So I can increase my temperature and apply it as low as 4 seconds for 365 degrees but I'm um, giving the uh, lower temperature since I was printing multiple items here. So a quick application, I'm getting that nice screen print finish. If you're printing for fundraisers, it's really great to be able to order some of these transfers, use the design across multiple items, and then just print them as the orders come rolling in with those transfers. So I was able to use that full front transfer there to create a print on the front of my sweatshirt. Now I can take the extra transfers that are on that sheet and I can personalize my pair of sweatpants. So again, I'm going to pop out this 11 by 15 platen. I want to load in a leg and sleeve. And this is just the standard single leg and sleeve platen. If you followed us here on the Facebook page or you're connected to anything with Stahl's um, emails, you've probably seen that we also launched a double leg and sleeve. So if I want to print both sides of my legs or print two sides of a sleeve, I can do that in one press, but I'm going to use the single on this application. Just loading on these jogger sweatpants. Here, I'm going to take that same screen printed transfer from earlier. Preheat a little bit to check my pressure since I swapped out that platen. And add my personalization. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and add this FHS Panthers. I'm even going to add the panther to it as well while I have it. But I could actually take any of these and put different placements on other places of the pants, other places of the sweatshirt. I could take this panther pride that was on the sheet, press it on a bag for an additional item. You pay per sheet when you order transfer. So uh, if you can gang multiple images on one sheet, your cost is going to stay the same for your transfers. You're just getting more prints and being able to print more items with them. So huge benefit of gang sheeting there. All right, I'm just going to trim these up so I can put these side by side and apply them together. So I'm going to go ahead and line these up. 
Make sure they're not overlapping. Just want to press them together. And then I'm going to apply this for the same 8 to 10 seconds, 340 degrees. So fundraising with Spirit Wear is just one opportunity that you have when you're printing for the schools and their Spirit Wear applications. So screen printer transfers create a big opportunity because a lot of the times with personalization for fundraising, you're ultimately going to be printing large bulk orders. So you're going to order in all of those screen printed transfers, gain some cost efficiency there, and then be able to print everything once the orders come in. And I talk about it a little bit in that live class, but one thing I do recommend doing is um, actually going through the process of um, setting up the guidelines for the schools when you're doing a fundraiser because you're going to want them to, um, you're going to want to make sure that you're being as honest with them as possible with when you're going to, when they need to have the orders in by, when you're going to present the products to them, um, and how the turnaround and how the order taking process is going to be as possible. That way there's no confusion once you get into the process. So a great pair there to be able to pair those two items together. Maybe I'm selling for the same school. I'm also going to take this bag that we'd printed earlier for the tailgate, package all of that together. So I'm creating a set here and I'm starting to create things in mind that I can sell to the school for multiple items. Now another thing to consider with um, fanware and spiritware outside of fundraising is another way to sell it. So we're looking at ways to sell spiritware. So a lot of people when they think about selling school spiritware um, and they talk about selling fundraising apparel and all kinds of things like that is you automatically think I take orders, I print the t-shirts, I send them to the job. But we never really think about on-demand printing. And when you sell to schools, a lot of the times um, events, there's always sporting events going on, tournaments, games, and all of that. All of those present opportunities for you to sell apparel at the event. And we know from um, a lot of studies and research that a lot of people are willing to pay more for items at events because they're um, kind of in the spirit. They quickly need something that has the school colors on it. They forgot to um, wear their favorite shirt. Maybe they want to support their family and they didn't have anything that was branded. It's a great opportunity for them to pick up apparel. And so there's multiple ways to do this. Using those screen printed transfers that I had just used on that t-shirt is a really effective way. You can either pre-print everything and take it with you to the event or you could take a portable heat press. Um, the Fusion, you could take, it's considered a portable heat press because you could certainly move it, but I'd recommend something probably a little bit less um, in the weight category, something like a clam style press, maybe a max style press, something a little bit smaller. Taking that heat press, taking screen printed transfers, and printing and personalizing on demand. So as an order comes in from somebody who needs a um, large blue shirt with the school name, um, you're able to um, print that for them and send it out the door. So there's a lot of opportunities for selling spirit apparel there. You're going to want to choose you know, three to seven blanks that you know are going to be able to sell profitably. You don't want too many options because then it's a lot to inventory and a lot to promote and it makes a lot of choices for your customers. But narrow it down to some really profitable items, take your heat press, take some transfers, print and personalize them there at the event. So a lot of opportunities with that. We've talked a lot on the Stalls TV Morning Show. Um, if you haven't seen that, that's a live broadcast that we do here on Facebook every Monday, but we've shared some past tips on printing at events. One of those tips includes adding personalization. And so we take this same sweatshirt idea. Maybe this sweatshirt with a screen printed transfer is your stock item that you're selling there. And if somebody wants it, I'm going to sell this for you know, $35 and they can purchase it as is with the school information. But if they're there celebrating um, Jimmy's first game and they want to be able to put their kid's name on the back or their own name on the back, then you can take a small format vinyl cutter, something 24 inches or even 12 or 15 if you um, want to go a little bit smaller for your space and offer to cut names and customize on demand and sell it for an additional charge there. And so for that, we're going to take the back of this shirt and we're going to personalize it. So I'm going to preheat the back there, adjust my pressure a little bit back. And I just simply would take a roll of, you know, one or two colors of material, offer personalization in the colors that complement the fabric. So a white and a red for these school colors, and then allow them to get their personalization. I flipped the number and name here just to create something that's a little bit more fashionable rather than being super athletic, but still kept the athletic font, so I'm still keeping that personalization. So 
whenever um, Jimmy's mom comes in and she says, I want Palmer 82 put on the back of my shirt to celebrate for my son, then I'll easily just um, cut the name or create the artwork, cut the name and press it. And if you're using that CADWORKS Live tool that I had mentioned a little bit earlier, there's an easy Teams for the Easy Team software on there that easily allows you to create names, cut them, and then press them. So you can um, take the orders, give a turnaround time, and just say, you know, come back XYZ amount of time, and I'll have that personalized and pressed for you. I see a couple of questions here coming in on Facebook. Um, Nicola, the hair bows, you asked where the hair bows were from. Um, you can actually purchase custom hair bows pre-made from places online, somewhere like uh, Wholesale Boutique or Viv & Lou, sell printed hair bows. You can also purchase them from any hobby store, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and you could create your own from Grow Grain Ribbon, also purchased from any craft store like a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby. Um, so that gives me my personalized back there to add a print location to this sweatshirt, a little bit more profitable item. Also, Annie, the hair bow videos you can find on stallstv.com if you just search for bows. We'll also go ahead and add a link into the broadcast so anybody who's watching this on Facebook Live will add that link where you can get to the hair bow videos that we have available on Stalls TV. Jimmy, did I have any questions coming in on GoToWebinar? This is actually a question that I have personally. <laughs> um, would you rather take pre-cut numbers or would you rather cut the number out of your CAD cut and your name just so everything's lined up? Which would you prefer? Yeah, there's two options to do that. So you can certainly add the personalization with pre-cut numbers and adding the custom names. That's an easy way to do that. Um, I would find that if you're going to offer custom graphics in any kind of font, then you'd want to just easily have it pre-spaced and ready to press. Either way, I would recommend doing pre-cut numbers and cutting the name because that's a much faster and efficient way to do it because you're going to be pushing a lot of orders out of the um, event, so you want to be able to turn them as quickly as possible and not spend a whole lot of time worried about alignment. All right, thank you, Courtney. You are welcome. And then I see, Mary, you had asked the CHS monogram hanging in the back. Was that screen printed or what color material was that? Um, that one would be um, the foil design here on the side. That is actually a CAD cut adhesive product. So we heat pressed a clear adhesive and then we foil over top of it. So it's very similar to the screen print process, but rather than putting a screen print adhesive ink, we use CAD cut adhesive and then we just got really creative with the way we foiled this technique and did some. Um, leopard, some orange striping, and created this really cool effect. As always, the video to create this is available at stallstv.com, so you can check that out under the Project Press It video series. Um, it looks like I've gotten all of the questions here today. So for those of you joining us, I appreciate you coming on. Congratulations to our giveaway winners. I encourage you to check out more Stalls TV live classes. That's available at stallstv.com slash events, and we always broadcast them here on our Facebook page as well, live to you. I'll see you next time. Thanks for coming.